Hello and welcome to Huet's Advanced Guide. So in this Advanced Guide, we are going to be going over specific things you can do as Huet. Essentially, the Advanced Guides are where the rubber meets the road, uh, where I actually show how to use a unit in general, and I'll go over specific things the unit can do. So the Basic Guide is kind of like an overview, the upgrades, all these sorts of things. The Advanced Guide goes over actually using the unit, specific strategies you can use, examples of those strategies, and which items are best for them. All right, so for items, uh, Huet can be good with Movement Bangle. Generally, I put this on Roland or Huet. Roland likes Movement Bangle just for general mobility, just to get around, to get away from enemies. Huet likes it for the same reason. Mobility is good. Having 32 jump means she can fly over any tile. doesn't matter how high it is because nothing is higher than 32, so she effectively can fly over any single piece of terrain no matter the height difference because as far as i know nothing exceeds a difference of 32. Um, so with six move this just increases her mobility even further i think she's one of the best units for movement bangle uh, it allows her to fly around from rooftop to rooftop just shooting enemies and you know pushing and retreating and holding high ground and that's what i think her best role is i also like speed items they get you more turns increase turn order so that you come up sooner so I recommend movement bangle and speed items or just speed items. Other things that she can run that are good, strength items are fine. Uh, dealing more damage is good. You know, as a unit who shuts things down but also does single target damage, you can't go wrong with that. Um, I don't recommend putting res earring on her. If she's dying a lot, you just need to position her better. So she shouldn't be getting killed often. Uh, however, if you do want to put a durability item on her, I would put like a speed item on her and then the vitality bangle. Uh, this gives her like 50 health a turn when her turn starts on, you know, level 50 new game plus. Otherwise it'll heal, I think it's like 10% of your health. But it's like some chip healing, which can be nice because sometimes she's far away and fighting like one or two enemy archers and like she just needs to get blind on both of them and then once she blinds them she's usually fine. So, alright. So there's one thing I want to go over before I jump into an actual battle. And that is the two modes of Huet. So... She is one of the few units whose either or ability um, is extremely strong. Like, they're, they're both strong. So, like, most units, it's like one of these is good, the other one sucks. With her, this will completely change what you're trying to do. So, blind duration, that goes from three to four turns, which matters because what this means is if you can maintain, if you can hit and trigger blind, which is a 90% proc rate on up to four enemy units, they will be basically perma-blinded. She can maintain blind and up to four things. So if there's a bunch of enemy physical units pushing you, and you just keep blinding them one after the other, you can maintain blind and up to four enemies. And also, this can be really good with like two-fold turn, fast-acting medication, and now, so that she can just keep spamming blind. And she can maintain it on up to probably like six to seven enemies if you just keep spamming her with two-fold turn and like fast-acting medication, because this gets her extra turns. Um, so you can maintain blind easily on like four to six targets with like turn accelerator and if and without it like three to four so this is blind bot huet uh, this is generally good against high enemy archer density because generally you want to blind archers especially if they're on high ground because they can shoot further out so blinding them can you know drastically decrease their accuracy letting your team advance this is one of the big upsides of huet She's essentially like a super insane flanker who's like absurd at pushing high ground. So you can't really go wrong uh, running blind. Uh, however, shadow stitching, er uh, shadow stitching duration plus one is also equally as good if not... Like they're, they're so similarly good. It really depends on which one you want. If there are no enemy archers, I would say this is probably slightly better. It increases the immobilize from two turns to three which is extremely powerful, especially if you put enemies in fire. If you can immobilize an enemy in fire um, at level 50, that's a hunt, or that's 150 damage over time for each turn of burning in a in a like a fire tile. And Anna can easily set those up even with just like single oil jugs. So you can you can use this if you can immobilize like a boss in a fire tile and it's a melee boss that's like she can get like a 30 percent chance to immobilize those that's pretty good like that's pretty consistent so both of these are very strong so depending on which one you want i would say blind for more archers shadow stitching for more just like general melee enemies uh, but you can also blind the melee enemies 
uh, but they can still trigger follow-up attacks. So usually shadow stitching high enemy melee density is better because if they are pinned to the ground, you can ignore them and they're basically disabled for two to three turns. Okay, so those are the main modes. Now we're gonna actually go into a little mock-up battle. So I wanna go, all right, so this, this map here, you see it's flat. She's still good on flat maps and I'll get into that later. Uh, but we want a map where, all right, I don't want a map where I'm already on high ground. I might just go to like a map where we're not in like max level. I guess this one's fine. It's like level 47. It's close enough. Okay. So, Hewett does extremely well with maps where she can sit on high ground and just spam blinding arrow and shadow stitching uh, shots. So, in this map, this isn't really a map where she can sit on high ground. She can still be really useful, though. Uh, what I'll do over here, I'll just make, like, um... We have to keep Frederico alive, so let's do this. Let's make... I like a Flanagan. Let's just grab like Benedict and Medina or something. Wherever he is. Oh wait, we're full. <laughs> Alright, we'll just run it. It doesn't matter. It does. I'll just keep her alive. Okay, so that's the first point. She does really well with maps where she can sit on high ground and spam shadow stitching. So the reason for this... This is... I'm going to be skipping around. I have like bullets, bullet points I want to get across. Um, high ground gives you a few things. It gives you three things. You get increased accuracy, increased range, and increased damage. The higher up, the higher all of these things increase. And also, enemies attacking you have decreased range, and I'm pretty sure like archers have decreased damage if you shoot up, because you're working against gravity. So, shooting down is always better. So, if, if Huet's on high ground and she's in like an archer fight, the enemy archers are going to have a hard time dealing with her so you generally want to get high ground if there isn't high ground she can still be a really good unit because of her really good mobility she can fly over things so like even on this map like she can just straight up fly over all this water so like trish has to respect this water but Hewitt can just ignore it she also ties archibald for passive high bow range but unlike archibald she can fly on top of things which puts her you know her average damage is a little bit better so, all right, so perfect example. So here's her flight, you know, with movement bangle. So let's say we want to shoot these guys, right? So basic attack puts this dude down to 312 and to 274. So let's go up to high ground. Okay, now you can see here, instead of 312, he, put, he's get, he gets put at 264. And what was it, 274? He gets to put a 258. So just by being up a little bit higher, and, and keep in mind, this is height 6 versus height 12. So just 6 height increases damage by this much. These are lower level enemies just by 3 levels, but she's still, like with a basic attack, putting them at half health. Uh, and then if we like shadow stitching this, it does put it at half health. And the thing with this is if this dude gets pinned, he probably can't even hit her back because she's so far away. Because he is one, two, three, four, five tiles away. So you can see here, if we immobilize him, let's see, what's his range? He literally can't even hit us. So if she can, if she freezes this, if she immobilizes this, he's stuck in place. So this is how immobilizing, like, enemy mages can be useful. She can grab high ground and, like, pin enemy mages and archers in place, and then they can't counterattack her because she's too far away. This is one of her basic use cases. Like, this is why immobilize is good, essentially. Um, but on the opposite end of things, she doesn't need high ground to be good either. She can always just fly in and immobilize stuff. Um, in this case, pushing in here is a little sketchy because there's a lot of things everywhere. Um, so obviously we would push the flank here, grab the high ground, shadow stitching this dude. She can also get like back crits and stuff. And she also seems to have a high crit rate in general, even though her luck isn't that high. So that's kind of like a weird thing about her. Um... So even if she's not on high ground, she can always hang out with the team and just keep blinding things, keep pinning things to the ground. So like, let's say she was with uh, Sarah Noah and Roland over here and Frederica, and these dudes are about to push us. She could pin this guy to the ground and then just the shield guy pushes us and this guy's delayed for like two to three turns. That is extremely massive for buying you time and just wasting enemy turns. So even if she's not on high ground, she's still an exceptional shutdown. You also have to consider this too. 
She has a 75% chance to pin something to the ground for two to three turns, depending on which upgrade you're running. And if you're going to be spamming Immobilize, it's three turns. 75% chance to disable like an enemy melee for three turns is absurd. Azana, at most, can paralyze for two turns, and it's 60% chance. So it's just that's really something to consider. You can also trigger follow-up attacks um, on enemies. Like if you have a dude who's on the opposite side of where you're shooting, you can trigger follow-up attacks with you at. So she has the potential to get really significant damage off just hanging out with her team or just spamming from high ground. Uh, so another thing to note about her, she can kite and avoid enemies by flying over things, uh, making it very hard to hit her. So if they're enemy melee chasing her, she can blind them and then fly away, and then even if they catch her, they're probably going to miss because they're blinded. Or she can shadow stitching and then fly away. Like in this case, as soon as the the match started, she shadow stitching the guy. Um, Alright, so we're going to do this so Frederica doesn't die. Well, shielding stance here, <laughs> because this map you have to protect Frederica, and I don't feel like uh, resetting, so we'll just kind of... Here, let's, let's put haste on her, let's see if that actually increases turn order, it doesn't, oh well. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so... Another thing she can do, uh, on some maps there are enemy archers that have a height advantage. Huet is actually, even though she's a weakness to bows, she can fly up to enemy archers and blind them at the same time, because she can move and then shoot. So she can fly up to an enemy archer, blind it, and then the enemy archer is going to have like a hell of a time hitting her. And she generally can just dominate enemy archers flat out. And it's quite absurd. Like, it's almost like a joke. Like As long as she doesn't move into two enemy archers that are not blinded, and uh, get, get like as long as she doesn't get shot by both of them, she can usually tank two archers if you have health upgrades on her. Uh, on like a fresh save and on like new game plus uh, her health is pretty good she can usually tank two archers from the front or sides if she gets hit in the back she'll probably die but she can usually tank two archer shots and if you fly up and blind one of the archers and then you're just tanking one archer you blind that other archer those archers are probably screwed like they're honestly going to miss most of their attacks and you're probably fine so she's really good at taking high ground and blinding archers. And she's also really good at taking high ground and pinning enemy mages to the ground or enemy healers so that they get separated from their team and can't help. Uh, so she has quite a lot going on that like really makes her a strong unit. Uh, this is why she's often considered S tier by most uh, tier lists. Um, okay, so we have the fly, blind archers. Okay, so Hewitt's shutdown can effectively remove enemies as threats for a few turns. So I already went over this. Um, I'm just going through the list. If I happen to touch upon one of the points, I'll just kind of reference that I've already gone over it. Um, but yeah, she can shut things down while attacking, and that's really useful. And removing enemies as threats for a few turns is also really useful. Because that's what that's the goal of shutdown, right? Reduce enemy effectiveness. You know, waste debuff them, waste their turns. That's the whole that's the whole point. So that is good that she can do that. All right, where can we moon jump? Doesn't look like I can hit a dude. Like if I moon jump here, yeah. It's, all right, she'll just. <laughs> she's probably gonna die. Let's put her here. It's, we're not trying to beat this, to be honest. I'm just trying to get my units in position. Okay. So another thing Huet can do. Uh, this is in relation to her weapon skill. So let's say you want to build up her TP to then spike something with Shooting Star. Uh, the reason why this can be useful is Shooting Star has really good range, so on a flat map, this ex this uh, allows her to hit targets that are very far out, kind of similar to Inescapable Arrow, except I think it hits harder. Um, it also costs one more TP. So if you battery her with Medina or Julio, she can spam this, even on flat terrain, and just like, you know, hit enemy mages, enemy healers, really far out, set up spikes on them, chip away at bosses as they're approaching. Uh, this also can just be used organically. You, what you do is you just spam her basic attack, which can actually hit really hard if you're very high up. And then when you want to use Shooting Star, once you hit 4 TP after 4 turns of just shooting basic attacks, you can just use it. So this is kind of like damage you at. Uh, blinding Arrow does deal less damage than a basic attack. So if you want to blind, you are going to be reducing your damage output slightly. Shadow Stitching does a little bit more damage. So that's something to consider. Uh, and then Fell Swoop actually does the exact same damage. And it's a melee attack. Uh, this is only useful if you're like stuck and you can't like, she's a, like, par not a paralyzed. If she's like immobilized and there's an enemy next to her and you want to kill it, 
without like breaking her or her uh, immobilize. This is an extremely situational circumstance that almost never happens, but basically shadow stitching, same damage, but it's a bow attack and it has a chance to immobilize. It's just better. Fell swoop, in my opinion, should cost one TP. And then there would be like some argument and maybe it should debuff too. Maybe, maybe reduce its damage, it causes debuff or something. That could be interesting. Um, but in, but currently, Shadow Stitching is just objectively better in every way. There are very rare situations where this is even useful. You can always move away a tile. So, yeah. One thing to note about Fell Swoop. Alright, Roland's turn. Let's have him do something, potentially. Uh, maybe four dragons lethal on this. You're gone. Just kill a guy for fun. <laughs> Just kill a man. Alright, it is Huet's turn again. So we've immobilized this dude. But he can still cast on us, even though we've immobilized him. He's not he's not disabled. He's just stuck in place. So keep that in mind. Like don't like don't think that if he was a melee unit, he'd be shut down, but uh, he is not. Uh, so she can kinda like move up here. Uh, one thing she could do is So sorry, so one thing to look at. So re-upping the Immobilize is useless here. It doesn't do anything. He still has it for a turn. So basically, if this is going to die, it's going to die in two hits. So what you should do in this situation, and I actually didn't put this in the notes, but this is very relevant to accumulating TP. Uh, you just use a basic attack here. He's not going to He's gonna get killed in two hits no matter what. So, so Shadow Stitching is irrelevant. Most units can deal 70 damage. So we just shoot him once. And we also got a crit because of insult to injury, which is sick. Um, okay. And then Anna's actually invis, so let's just haste herself. Okay. Alright, so one thing that's that's exceptional about Huet, if this is for maps with high elevation. Most spells and bow attacks, and this is pretty much almost every single enemy spell and bow attack, cannot hit over plus 10 height. So if we look at this enemy spell... This enemy spells plus or minus 10 height so if you are above 10 height you can't get hit by them and there are a lot of maps where you can get extremely high up and like let's look at this archer ice arrow plus eight let's look at his basic attack plus eight so you don't even need to be plus 10 but if you if you're at least at 10 height or higher there is a very high chance enemy archers can't even hit you and also if you're at 11 or higher, enemy mages can't hit you. So you can pin them to the ground and then ignore them. And even be uh, within casting range. And they physically... You could be... Like, like let's say, uh, here's the enemy mage. And this is a plus... This is like plus 11 height. They can't even hit you. They can't... They physically cannot cast on you. And then you can... You have free reign on their entire team. You can just do whatever you want. And just keep pinning things down. Keep blinding things. Keep using normal attacks for big damage. Just keep spiking down specific targets. Uh, another thing too is like Huet and Anna uh, can work together and like Milo. Uh, so so Huet's really good at flanking with Anna, Milo, Maxwell, uh, sometimes Roland, but especially Milo and Maxwell and Anna because they're very durable. So they can get into weird positions and climb and use you know moon jump and traverse, and Anna can surmount, and Huet can pin like selectively blind and pin targets and remove them from the equation. Milo can tempt some targets. And then Anna can single target nuke and set up spike, and then Maxwell can like AOE. So it can be a really useful thing for like a flanking squad to eliminate like enemy mages and archers so that the rest of your team can push safely. And they can also be very aggressive and mobile. Like Anna can push up while invisible and you know gain ground while uh, Maxwell can tank because he has res and all these other things. So it's pretty good. All right, we might do this. I don't know probably a bad idea let's not do that <laughs> let's just we'll just maintain the shielding stance yes dude's immobilized he has no targets they're attacking the decoy which is nice because that's basically just them wasting turns attacking roland he has a res earring so i don't mind him dying because he won't actually die <laughs> he tanked that too all right and then here anna can just do this she can clean up damage and then go back and go back to invis. So she can actually help eliminate key threats safely. Now obviously our healer's probably screwed here, but we're not actually trying to beat this map. This is just for the guide. And Roland got his res. <laughs> he took another one damage. So, 
We're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna we're gonna nuke nuke these boys. Frederick is insane, dude. <laughs> She's so crazy. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Do I want to? I don't know if I want to fire these. Oh, they're resistant. All right, I'll ice stone them. This is actually pretty decent damage on. Uh, what I could do is I can untan them here. Let's 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 resolve this southern area for fun. Okay. Okay. So one weird thing you can do on Huet is you can have Flanagan fly with her. He can put ramparts and shielding stance on her, and that basically makes her extremely tanky. So if there's like a ton of enemy archers, like if there's like five enemy archers, there's maybe like one or two maps where this is the case. Uh, but essentially what you can do is just have uh, Hewett take half or quarter damage. And between the two of them, you're looking at basically no one tanking. Like as long as they're like uh, Flanagan's not getting hit from the sides or back, he can ironclad, take half damage. Hewett can take half damage. This can, this can help you dominate high ground easier if you're having a hard time on like a map that's very archer heavy uh, so that's like a, a good tactic they both fly so they can both grab high ground so pretty useful to do okay and then for accuracy if you have your problems with their accuracy she actually has a built-in solution uh, you can use focus so raise your accuracy and luck and then gain the use of one more command um, this doesn't allow you to move again, so basically, uh, if you move, you can focus and then, like, shoot, like, a shadow stitching or blinding. Or you can focus, move, and then shoot a thing. Uh, but you can only move once. It doesn't allow you to move a second time. Sight set is kind of weird. It kind of turns her into a turret that does, like, chip damage. I don't really think it's that good. The only case is, that the only argument where it could be okay is if like 10 things move within range of it, but it's just chip damage, so I don't really think it's that good. Uh, I felt like mentioning it. Uh, you're better off blinding or shadow stitching, because if you can shadow stitch at least two enemies, and there's like five approaching, now you only have to worry about three of them. So just the power of pinning things to the ground is massive in this game. Uh, a rise in range. So sometimes you might want to save this, you get increased range for your first normal attack. As long as you use Blinding Arrow and Shadow Stitching, and you don't use your normal attacks, you can actually save this, and it can be pretty good. And another thing that's kind of a weird tip, so let's have Milo take her turn, and then we'll go into that. Uh, what do we want to do here? This guy's like, <laughs> I don't want to flip a healer. I could, but I don't think that's very useful. Maybe we Moon Jump. Oh, wait, we can just power of love this stuff, right? And let's do this. Moon jump. Yeah, we'll we'll flip this guy. We will heart stealer him. Cool. All right. So you might think she has no AOE damage. And you're right, not in her base kit. However, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have no like she doesn't have any AOE damage because like any unit she can throw stones. So if you ever want her to deal AOE damage, you just throw an elemental stone. And now she's an AoE unit. <laughs> so, there you go. And then with Maxwell over here, just kill these both. Well, I guess you just kill one. Whatever, we'll just do that. So she can use stones as AoE, just like any unit. But it can be very useful to do. And then this is just for fun. <laughs> just killing those. Okay, so, focus, accuracy. So I went over the fell swoop. Does the same damage, but it's basically worse. Uh, Hewitt can shoot. Oh yeah, so this is extremely useful to do. Um, fortunately, we can't turn accelerator, but I, I, she just needs one more turn. So we'll just go over one final thing to wrap up. Perhaps you'll enjoy this. Um, all right, Anna, what do you got for me? I'm just gonna kill this guy. <laughs> it's just like these lightning stones. All right, Sarah Noah. Dang, this dude's at three health. Oh wait, he critted or something, or high ground damage maybe. I don't know. I didn't notice if he critted or not. Okay, let's just get one more turn. So she can shoot through allies. I'm gonna set this up so you can easily see it. I'll put uh, Trish here. Just kill this guy. Make a decoy. Probably make sure that, uh, oh wait, shit, can they? Okay, I was about to say, can they kill? 
<laughs> Frederica, that would lose us the mission. All right, we'll have a bunch of dudes stay, stay in. They're all women, too, so. I refer to people as dudes in general. I think a lot of people do this. This is a very standard thing to do. Uh, okay. Alright, so she can shoot through people. So, how does what does that look like? Looks like this. She can shoot right over your allies with all of her abilities. So, team... Team Huet, meaning a Huet that's hanging out with the team that has front lines, will be able to just chill out from a safe position and just keep blinding and pinning things to the ground, allowing you to use her on literally every map, and she's always good. There's never a map she's bad on, because she is good on every single map. Blind is always good, pinning things to the ground is always good, and she's just a, a really good unit. And then if you want to spike something down, you can always fly on high ground, you can shadow stitching, uh, you can shooting star... Just like spike a dude down pretty good stuff uh, that's pretty much it for this guide uh, overall Huet is one of the best units in the game you can run her in any team comp on any map she's always good or not that not she's not always good she's always exceptional she's never bad if there's three enemy archers on high ground she can fly up blind one you can in tandem her blind the other one and then she can just tank a single boat like a single arrow you know, because the other two are, are statistically going to miss. They'll have an extremely low chance of hitting. Like, it'll be... The highest it can be is 30% accuracy. But it'll probably be like 10 to 20. And then, you know, she takes a hit, she blinds that third archer, and now you have three disabled archers that have a very low chance of hitting her. She can she can dominate her weakness. That's like one of the weird things about her. Like, she's weak. She's like slightly weak to bows. Hawksbane. But she can dominate them by blinding them. So it's this hilarious thing where... Her weakness is nothing. Like, she has no weakness. And then if you get her on high ground, she just is really good. She just deals so much damage, it's absurd. She has the best single target damage ability. It, its damage is similar to the other archers, but it's better than theirs because of the height advantage she tends to get. Uh, getting Archibald on high ground is a nightmare. Uh, the only unit that can really climb is Trish, but she has to spend... Um, TP, I think you can get the leap cost reduced. Yeah, leap TP minus one. So you can leap for free, but it's only plus or minus ten. It can be okay, though. Uh, she's the only other unit that can really climb well, and she also has three jump, which makes her a little bit of a better climber. So, but, but Huet's definitely the best archer, for sure. And I've made a video on it if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Huet Advanced Guide. If you found this useful, definitely like the video and subscribe. I still have, what is it, 17 more advanced guides to do. I was surprised I actually didn't do hers because I run her, like, constantly. She's one of my favorite units. Um, just because she's so good. She's so adaptable. She's good in literally every single team comp. There is not a team where she's bad in. Because every team benefits from d disabling enemies and damaging them simultaneously. And from grabbing high ground and holding a position well. And she's really good at all of that. And she can solo some maps from, you know, rooftop gimmicks which is hilarious, so pretty solid unit, very durable when positioned correctly, really good damage, really good shutdown, doesn't even need a battery, can just keep basic shotting for good damage and then build up shooting stars or just keep blinding every turn or shadow stitching every other turn. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, just a really good unit. Thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next one, and make sure you drop a comment because that is cool.